Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another airbrush video. Today we'll be looking at a non-conventional and larger spray nozzle Kumas paint sprayer, electric and airless. It's a bit different, has a much wider nozzle at about 2.5 millimeters and sprays sort of very similar to the larger air guns or sprayers you see in automotive and industrial work such as painting walls and fences and larger objects. I've uh, decided to purchase and experiment with this for the use of larger models, dioramas, surfaces, model railway, uh, glazes on ceramics and the very big 3D prints that I'm about to undertake. The technology has been proven and on the market for quite a while, uh, fairly reliable and with demonstrable good atomization and results. There is a fair amount of warnings and instructions on the box and the sprayer itself in regarding what's to be aware of regarding uh, safety, pressure, fumes and directly spraying compressed air on skin all which should be taken note of. Unboxing we have acquired a viscosity cup which normally you'd get it with a manufacturer or brand of uh, paints, stains and products so there's nothing to measure this against a chart or a manufacturer trend. The usual use of this is to pour the medium or paint through this cup and you count how many seconds for the start of the flow to the end of the flow. We do not quite know how to do this so we're going to do the swirling in a jar method plus a spare atomizer which we'll get into shortly. It is a variable power supply so this should work in Europe, USA, Australia. Uh, however, we've got an American plug and an adapter. It's imperative to be aware how this mechanism works and the mechanical function to uh, prevent any sort of uh, injury, poor discharge or damage of the product. The rear has a nozzle, a dial, to adjust the paint spray settings much like a single action airbrush. We've got a trigger on the side here and the removable cup with measurements down the side for ease of uh, thinning in millimeters and ounces. On the inside we have a siphon with a filter that pulls apart for adjustment and cleaning. The nozzle is brass in the center and all plastic. The rest of the mechanism is also some sort of acetate or ABS plastic. The casting from injection molding is very poor with lots of uh, flash and imperfections. In the inside we've got a, another version of an atomizer. At the front of it a few holes for the paint to flow through under pressure. During every use you will need to disassemble and reassemble. The main point of contact is these two Phillips screw connections to untie it and remove the top of the cup. We also have a siphon and return for the paint to go in and pressure to come out. The mechanism slides open. We have a piston, rubber stopper, a large screw. This end is the chamber. Now there is a mechanism that continually pumps this which creates a vacuum in the jar and siphons the paint to spray it through the nozzle from this point. This is another mechanism that will be important to clean. Look inside 
it's not necessary to open uh, be, be careful that this mechanism can snap off uh, it's slightly lubricated if you do choose to crack it open now it works with this electro magnet pulling this lever backwards and forwards which pumps the spring piston to build up enough air to suction and siphon straight through the nozzle the reason why this needs to be lubricated as the same with airbrushing any paint leaking here will seize it and will damage one of these plastic components it's all injection molded with reclaimed ABS we've uh, discussed the uh, shotty molding with the amount of uh, flash and the component is very highly likely to break if not performed correctly the instructions makes it very clear which was not included in this box I have found it very easily to download off the internet and will include the link in the description section below to lubricate with oil or petroleum jelly this mechanism and this chamber paint will interact and blast through the nozzle building up as we're aware with airbrushing past the uh, nozzle needle o-ring if any paint goes backwards in the mechanical functions of the airbrush it's going to seize and jam up as this is a automatic piston if it seizes it's going to get stuck puts a uh, over tension and torque onto the motor and will wear out or break a plastic component with uh, oil and petroleum jelly it is going to remain lubricated and work freely while under submersion of paint just as simple as a very light glaze with a q-tip and a fine oil or jelly plus all of this component the assembly is easy the spring over the piston right into here and we slide this whole mechanism across and reconnect it the fitting can be a bit tight and awkward there's a little cut out here push in and slip on quiet pressure and re uh, the screws the filter and siphon clicks together the siphon clicks into the suction hole which is the longer one for electrical safety you're not to disassemble at any stage further than the black cap on and remain like that until you discharge the power before reopening I have half filled the reservoir with water simply add on and screw the disadvantages of a siphon fed opposed to a gravity feed air gun or airbrush is you're to hold it parallel and spray parallel at all times uh, spraying upwards or downwards may get uh, air locks or misfire of siphoning paint and uh, spraying uh, other issues are included the atomizer is connected in and the nozzle screwed in till tight uh, notice and a reminder that all threaded fittings are plastic and not to be too overly tightened and very uh, gentle uh, they will have a tendency of snapping and breaking the operation of the motor can be very alarming and surprising at first uh, the sounds they'll be performing is its correct and normal operation which is a very large and continuous uh, buzz far la louder than your contemporary and normal hobby or oilless compressors say about as loud but not as constant as a larger full horse powered oiled compressor as we can see atomizes quite well and it mists the water with great ease I have a little bit of 250ml white knight enamel paint used for painting the salt mine window frames and mineral turpentine I have done a 50-50% mix swirling the paint around you can see that it sticks to the walls 
and becomes semi-transparent. If it solidly sticks to the wall, it's far too thick to spray. And if it leaves nothing behind, it's far too thin. So I think uh, this is a good uh, viscosity. And we'll just uh, apply it straight into the reservoir. I have the dial put into the lightest setting. Having a look close, this is a fine mist. I may have uh, thinned it about uh, too much. It's more of a uh, airbrush level. Bit of adjusting and learning to do. The catalog is a mostly pure white coverage. The mist started off becoming very uh, fine. It did start getting splattery a bit after a while. Though it's evidence that it can be used to certain degrees. I am impressed enough to play with this further and buy other paints and mediums to work this through. Uh, finishing something like this Mandalorian helmet would be so much quicker than a point-free nozzle, especially if I was to buy one or two litres of automotive filler primer and sprayed it around to fill in all of those nasty z-axis lines and sand it afterwards. Uh, all in all, this is not a fine tool. You're not going to get nice gradients. It's only is to base coat prime or gloss coat surfaces and uh, more or less fairly pleased with this. Next step is to reclaim any unused paint. With the correct uh, thinner or solvent, wipe down, soak and flush out any soiled surfaces. For the first time, the cleanup is going to be very time consuming to get used to the adjustment and maintenance regime of this tool. Another note to that is this atomizer may have its holes blocked, which can just be pried out with a skewer and slowly wear out from solvent exposure. Uh, this uh, spring and mechanism can be replaced from the sources purchased. The outer piston and spring is unaffected. The only a light coat is on the inner part and the inner bit of the lid. This is very quickly resolved via using a Q-tip or bottle brush to swab it out and flush as much as you can. Uh, re-lubricate after use and wiping down this component and again re-lubricating to prevent friction and then reapply with a generous coating of petroleum jelly on the piston and the hole the cleaning, if lubricated correctly the first time around, should not be an issue at all. The turnaround was not overly unpleasant. Assemble and half fill the reservoir with the correct thinner. And discharge a little bit just to clean out any remnants. the highest quality a bit vague in instructions I believe this tool is very valid and will definitely do the job the skill required to use a siphon feed over a gravity feed is a different kettle of fish I suffered with the very little amount of product I had pre-planning did run out and was not able to paint much of the piece of paper and the Mandalorian helmets. However, I will conduct a part two to this video showcasing various mediums going through it and finding an ideal thinning ratio to get ultimate uh, atomization. Just like with uh, airbrushing, when you change multiple factors from an uh, air source to an internal pump and siphoning the paint up, multiple adjustments will have to be made until this is usable and I am of the belief that this will have 
be able to produce a very fine finish. Now, after receiving this product in the mail, which you can purchase from Chinese resellers such as eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, Harbor Freight, and uh, whatnot, a lot of the uh, reviews online plus YouTube were people struggling to find the perfect mix for it to operate ideally. US uh, commercial demonstrations and more poor reviews. I believe this is more so the case of uh, struggling with a completely different style of tool and not doing extensive testing. Stay tuned for more from the Kumis uh, LS gun though feel free to invest in one for yourself and indulge in your hobby. I believe there'll be many applications across many hobbies from uh, textiles, shoes, all the way to the different modeling and industrial or automotive applications. And I think it could go as far as even uh, using more volatile mediums uh, such as two-part epoxies, glues, putties, and harsher substances at its very cheap price uh, I wouldn't uh, shed a tear if something went uh, drastically wrong though in the instructions ordering various parts such as only the lid or only a diaphragm would be incredibly cheap and the majority of the mechanism can be retained uh, regardless I'm glad I got it I'm really glad I'll be able to do much larger uh, models prints and crossing over to cosplay props and you'll be seeing a lot more of that content here. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys later. See ya.